Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Welcome to my little intro into my next big modeling project. Now you may have seen uh, the YouTube vids recently where uh, I've done three, I think, recently. They're, they're not great vids, I've got to be honest, but you can see that I've completed the F-15 E Strike Eagle uh, from Revell, uh, 148 to go. And then, uh, and I did have some issues with that kit, a few fit problems and hmm. Uh, showing its age a little bit, but, but still good detail and uh, quite a good representation when finished. Uh, then I had then I had a real nightmare at New Year. I was building the uh, Edouard Weekend Edition Mirage 3C. It's quite an old kit, and uh, many many issues on this kit. Yeah, uh, fit issues, gap issues, parts that just weren't seen. They look fine on the sprue. Everything looked fine when I first opened it. Nothing obvious until you start building it, and it was one of those that the nightmares just keep on coming. But anyway, that's done. Uh, and then I've recently just done the, uh, just for fun really, just a quick build, a few evenings and a weekend, uh, the Bristol Bowfighter from Airfix 170 second scale. So that was quite good fun. I quite enjoyed that. Again, a few little issues, but nothing too serious. And I've got a bit fed up with it, building basically bad kits, and there's been a lot of bad kits. Very disappointing, a lot of work. My enthusiasm fades when I've got to start completely re engineering something from scratch, uh, and I just get a bit fed up with that. So, I have the antidote now. I have a kit here that is 10 years old, it came out in the autumn of 2009. It completely changed the game in modelling, I believe, and since that release there has been a multitude of manufacturers you know from Great Wall Hobby, um, Wing Not Wings um, who have been really amazing coming out of nowhere um, and of course people like uh, you've had Kitty Hawk and you've had Ryefield Model and uh, Great Wall Hobby I think I may have mentioned uh, also ICM in the Ukraine so a lot in the Far East after ICM in Eastern Europe uh, some amazing quality kits coming out and obviously people like Edward have stepped up their game, Airfix have stepped up their game a lot but this kit that's under this this bag here was the Genesis. This kit completely changed the way that manufacturers manufacture uh, construction kits out of polystyrene, uh, the way they mould them, the way that they conceive and plan them and the, the ideas that went into it were groundbreaking in terms of that crossover with some engineering elements into the kit. Um, we talk, just mentioned the uh, had the Honda RC166 from Tamiya. That was a kit that was that followed this uh, very close behind this one, and included this sort of engineering elements in it. Anyway, I think it's time. Um, I've had this kit for ten years. As I'm sure lots of people have either built it or got it in their stash. Um, I haven't seen a video on it now for nearly a year. Uh, one or two people have done some really, well, there's been some fantastic examples actually, really nice. So I'm hoping to, to sort of get up to that level again and, uh, and raise myself. I always feel when I have a really good quality kit that I raise up to meet that standard. Of, I tried to, I think lots of models are the same really. I think if it's a really bad kit, you're just happy to get the thing done and have it looking something like what it should look like. And it, it just puts you off the because the sheer number of hours uh, you don't get much return. But it's something like this, you have got the fundamental engineering done for you. It's going to go together beautifully, and it leaves you with options for, you know, uh, weathering and dioramas and all sorts of things if you wish. Um, I'm not a big weathering and diorama man, relatively speaking. I have to confess, it's not my greatest skill, and I sort of want to move on to the next thing very quickly. Anyway, without further ado, if you haven't, have you actually guessed what this thing is yet? Because I can tell you now that it is something a bit special. Um, and I'm going to zoom in enough of me. I'm going to zoom you in a little bit, if you just bear with me. So you get a better view of this. Actually, oops, <laughs> I think that was a bit too much. But this is a kit that is, you could say, is an epoch making kit. A complete game changer of a kit. So really, in its own right, uh, kind of legendary, and has been followed by uh, by a number 
a number of others. Are you ready for the big reveal? Here it is. So, in summary, it's been 10 years. It's time. It's time to reveal to you. Did you see it? <laughs> it is the Tamiya Mark 9 Spitfire. Mark 9C in, of course, it's 30 second scale. Many of you will have built this or still have it to build. And I just think that I've been putting this off for far too long. It's coming soon. It's coming soon. And uh, I'll, just, I'll just actually zoom you in a little bit and you can just see. I, I did buy a few extras for this kit, so it's possibly of, uh, possibly of interest. So, let's just, there we go. Right, so, unboxing it. Da -da. Yes, it'll be very familiar to many of you, I know. Um, not exactly first of the punch, ten years on, am I? <laughs> but we won't worry about that. Box. <coughs> so, what we got, what we got, what we got. So, we have got these beautiful sprues. I won't do a review because other people have done it already and frankly done it better than I'm going to do it. But uh, you'll notice that I've already removed the rather, one thing I hate about Tamiya, and the very few things I've got to say because I love them, but I hate those bags with the with the uh, staples in. I mean that is the worst thing for touching a plastic model. It, it won't touch it while it's in the bag but when you try to get it in and out it's fake. So, so I, what I've done is I've put some Tamiya tape on, you know, so that we can get at it and uh, without any problems at all. Now, everybody talks about the ejector pin problem with Tamiya. Fully understand that. Um, some very well known people have got really get quite upset about it and I do understand. Uh, I think they've got a point, yeah. I think Tamiya will learn as they go on that they need to change. That's one thing they do need to change. But by and large, they don't have the ejector pins where they're going to be obviously seen uh, unless you start taking the panels off, which you may well do, of course, especially when you've got panels like we're going to see here. But uh, but the quality of the plastic and the surface detailing here is absolutely amazing. I'm just going to bring you in a little bit so you can see with a little bit more detail. No, I don't get that in the light. Here we go. I can just get that to focus. There we go. I think you can see the surface detail on this. It's just it's exceptional, really. The riveting is marvellous. Yeah. It's just amazing. Anyway. Moving on swiftly, because you don't want to see another review on this, because you've probably done it, seen them yourself, done them yourself, whatever. Let me just uh, put that away. <coughs> we'll put that away. I won't go along with these all out, just saying that they do a full sprue, sprue review. Come back a bit, come back a bit, come back a bit. Uh, we're having a little bit of trouble with our zoom today, so there we go. But it's just amazing, isn't it? I mean, the quality is there, and you know that's going. This kit is going to go together beautifully. Everybody that's already built it tells me so. So what we got? We got a few extras here. So we got the um, wow, Brett Green. Hey, we couldn't do without him, could we? So we've got Brett Green's How to Build Tamiya's 132 Spitfire Mark 9C, and also the Mark 8. I think this is the later edition of the, of the book. This is an absolute treasure of a book. Uh, I mean, it's a collector's item in its own right, you know. This is going to be very, very helpful, so I'm quite looking forward to uh, really shifting through this and having a good old, uh, a good old read. Uh, looking at all the various versions that are available, various um, different slants that people have put on it with their own skill, and uh, Shangri-La Spitfire, here we go. So many, so many choices and ideas that people have come up with. Whoops. But anyway, it's a great book, so I can seriously recommend that to you. It's going to be a great aid to the model. And I've got a few other things that various people recommended to me. So we've got here the HGW seat belt set. Now the HGW set is fabric, much nicer than the, 
the ones provided in the kit, much nicer than the Edward ones, in fairness. I actually bought both, I've got the Edward as well, as you can probably see here. Um, but I think that, honestly, these are, yeah, they just look more realistic. Um, being fabric, uh, that's that's going to do the job, but between the two I can, I can really have a nice set of seat belts. Uh, of course, the t uh, Edouard, I should say, the Edouard mask, invaluable. Now, a couple of extras. Yes, I bought the uh, Barracuda resin cast main wheels. I think those are really nice. And I think that's far better than the rubber that's in the kit, so we'll go with that. And, this way it takes civilised. And then finally, we've got the um, uh, model masters, master model I should say, the cannons. Well, these are really nice. Now if you buy these, if you've got the same kit and you want to buy these, make sure you get this particular one because there's another version for the, I think it's the Mark, the Mark 16 spit, the other Tamiya I can't forget which Mark it is, and they're not the same at all, they're much shorter. So I had to, well long story, I ended up, up bidding them around, it wasn't the supplier's fault, I ordered the wrong item on eBay, so uh, long story short, and it ended up in the bin. But, the brass, beautiful, you just look at that, and uh, it's got the little stub, it's got the main cannon, Spano cannon. So, yes, Spano 20mm cannon, in fairings, there you go, uh, don't miss it, get those. Uh, and then we go to the kit, of course, and uh, this is all happened, and, you know, you guys have probably seen this, so I'm not going to go through it in great detail, just flip through the. But again, you know, look at the quality. Clear instructions, uh, no doubt about where to put things, how to paint things. You've got these lovely movable surfaces with rods. You know, Tamiya are brilliant because look at this. They, what do they do? They actually tell you to to drill holes, and they clearly tell you how big to drill them. Not like any uh, older kit that I just had, which was just saying drill a hole. And that's very helpful, you know. Uh, I mean, come on guys, this is properly engineered. It's thought about, and they've, they've been through this fine tooth comb. It's a complete concept, the kit is really. It's not just a, it's just not just a plastic kit. And, uh, oh, we got a little bit of an addendum, I guess. Take, remember to take the bit off, yeah. Interestingly, actually, just talking about this, um, this advisory here. What that's telling you to do is to remove that little bit of extra sprue which is actually for the ejector pin to push out the item out of the mould. And I've noticed that on the likes of Zokimura, who are another phenomenal manufacturer, maybe even the best, but they do things differently. They don't have so many ejector pin marks, but they have a lot of these little tabs like this. And that's what they do. They have the ta added tabs for the ejector pins to work against and push out the sprue out of the mould. So maybe that's something that Tamiya might want to think about in the future. There's always a compromise, of course, you then have to cut these off if there's lots of them, it can be a bit of a pain, but not as much of a pain as uh, ejector pins, which you've got to scrub out of all sorts of silly recessed places. Anyway, here we are. So we've got the Merlin, which is fairly typical to their other models, like the uh, the Mustang and the Mosquito, I think it's the generic Merlin. Obviously this was the first one to have it, in 30 second scale. And then you've got this wonderful uh, system of magnets. And with the magnet system, you've got these very, very thin uh, fairings and uh, engine cover cowlings. And uh, you can remove them. They're very scale-like. The thickness is perfect. And you can remove them and do what you want with them. Um, yeah, we won't be using the... That's one thing that's not so good on the Tamiya. We won't be using the uh, Tamiya masking set, which isn't cut out. You've got to cut it with a knife. That's a pen on the back side. So we've got the uh, Ed one to cover for that. And yeah, there we go. I mean... I think it's going to be hugely enjoyable. I mean, everybody that uh, that has built this, there's a chap uh, on YouTube, I'm sorry, I forgot his name, uh, American guy who's a great modeler, and he's been building this, and he was saying that the the cockpit is like a kit in itself. It's so beautiful, it goes together so well. Absolute joy. Anyway. Uh, well, I'll go through all the sprues and say this, but oh, man, most people have got the kit and know all about it, but... Look at this, it's just things that make it a little bit different, you know. And here we are, you know, these beautiful, beautiful little covers. 
for the uh, the cowling for the top of the engine, and then the actual engine covers, the chin and the the side covers, and moulded from this gossamer thin plastic. It's about a millimetre, if that. It's absolutely awesome. We've got some photo etching there, of course, and then we've got the rubber wheels, which we're not going to use for obvious reasons because of the seam, really. Then you get your magnets and your little tool screwdriver. A completely thought through concept, and it has its own little box, which I like this. I don't, I don't know why they didn't do that for the mosquito, having a, a separate box. Very good idea. Anyway, there we go. So, um, in terms of schemes, I'm not sure what I'm going to go for yet. I'm or even versions. Um, obviously this is the Johnny Johnson Mark 9 that they depict here. Um, I'm very tempted to go for the the scheme, and I can't remember the actual code letters, but the, the, I'm very tempted to go for the Mark 9 that was flown by a guy called Charlie Fox, a Canadian, and he is the guy who, in his Spitfire Mark 9, actually uh, shot up Field Marshal Rommel. That's very tempting for me. I think I might go with that. Um, but we shall see. We shall see. I need to get some decals for it, some extra decals. Uh, that's the one other thing that I think we should probably consider because, as we know, Tatmyar's decals, they are thick. They're very thick. And people do get a little bit upset about that. So, yeah. I need to put all my bits back in here. Oh, yeah. I've got to get the old uh, Right, so there we are. We'll just put the book in. That will weight everything down nicely. There we go. Like so. So, just get the box cover. Um, anyway, uh, nothing groundbreaking on you, I know, here, but listen. You know, if you've been making a few kits and you've not been enjoying it as much as you think you should, I think that this is probably the uh, this is probably the antidote. So that is what I'm going to be building. Let me get you nicely in there. There we go. How's that? So I'm going to be building this um, over 2019, and uh, very very much looking forward to it. And I'll try and do a few vids of it, building it. Uh, perhaps some of the more interesting parts, not so much the Merlin, because I think everybody's seen that, but um, yeah, I'll try and issue some vids along the way, and uh, come on the journey with me. Thanks a lot for watching, and uh, till next time, take care, and goodbye.